greatest journeys in life. Begin with a desire. To discover something beautiful beyond yourself, leading you on an unexpected adventure that takes your breath away. Where you both lose yourself and find yourself. When you realize that your whole life has led to this moment. And your heart whispers. Ani vidodi vidodi li. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. Hine hakatan, baruch haba b'shem adonai. Behold, the bridegroom comes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord.
You can be seated. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Sir, you have asked the most difficult question that a father could ever be asked. So I have prepared a video with my response. And I have already decided that I cannot just unilaterally give my Rebecca away because I love her too much. But I'm willing to enter into a covenant with this young man to share her for the rest of their lives. So my video will tell you more of my reasoning. They are some of the greatest miracles in life. Those moments when God does something so amazing that it instantly changes your reality forever. Rebecca, I'll never forget that moment when I got to hold you for the very first time. You've always been so sweet and happy, even as a baby. In fact, your mother and I called you our happy baby. But I could have never imagined just how much I would love you. But in that moment, holding you in my arms, my heart overflowed. From that day on, you have been Becca Boo Bear, my LaKeka Lynn, and you have made my life such an adventure. I remember your very first day of public school, getting you all ready, encouraging you to go and meet new friends. And how could I ever forget teaching you how to drive a car? Now that increased my prayer life dramatically. Rebecca, you have always been so fun, joyful, and the life of the party. In so many ways, you're just like your mother, courageous and caring. And in so many ways, you're just like me, the perfect equal blend. Well, maybe 51% more like me. I have seen you blossom into the remarkable young lady you are today, and it's been such a joy to behold. You are gracious and yet determined. I've seen you take hold of God's purpose from your decision to accept the call of God on your life and attend King's University to stepping out into ministry. The cry of your heart has been the cry of your father and your mother's heart, and you've seen the multitudes, you've sat with them, and you've seen it on the natural, but I've shown it to you in the spirit. And before you were born, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I've raised you up to be an evangelist to the nations of the earth. You have ministered passionately in the Holy Land, and I'll always cherish our trip to Nigeria, just you and me, when you were my associate missionary evangelist. Rebecca, you are truly a precious gift from God. So on this day, I don't look at this moment as me giving you away, but rather you are my priceless investment into the destiny I believe God has for you. And Jonathan, and Jonathan, I am honored to receive you into our family. You are the young man that Joni and I have prayed for all of Rebecca's life. And we are overjoyed, not just Joni and me, but all of our family, that Rebecca will be a part of your great family, the Weiss family. I think that the Lord and Rebecca chose well in you, Jonathan Weiss, and I know the Lord and you chose well in Rebecca. Together, you will make a formidable team. Jonathan, I know you will cherish Rebecca, and Rebecca, I know you will love and honor Jonathan. May you both fulfill God's destiny in your life and ministry together, and I speak blessing upon blessing over your life forever. I love you, my sweet Rebecca. 
you have grown into a beautiful, amazing young woman, and you will always be Daddy's baby. We're so blessed that you all joined us to see the wedding of Jonathan and Rebecca, and we're going to be drawing on the Jewish family tradition of the Weiss family and traditions of the Lamb family as well. And some of the things that you're going to see, you may recognize from Scripture as pointing to the relationship between the bridegroom of heaven and the bride of Christ, the bride of Messiah. And so, for example, the, the announcing of the behold, the bridegroom comes, we know that's from the Bible. We also know that when the time comes, when a young man in ancient Israel would be betrothed to a young woman, he would put a silver cup before her. If she drank from it, a cup of redemption, he would go away to his father's house and prepare a place for her and then come and get her. And we believe that there's going to be a meeting in the air between the bridegroom and the bride of heaven. And so what we're seeing today is that connection being played out as the bridegroom is going to meet the bride in the air in order to bring her into full glory. And we, we recognize also that, that there's a, a significant connection here between Becca Boo Bear and Jonathan Jingle Bear <laughs> because they were both raised as the bears of the family. <laughs> and so we want you to be in on that, being in all the family tradition and, and to see the Lord elevated as these two beautiful young people are joined together. So. The Father knows the time. Jesus himself said that he didn't even know the time of his return, but only the Father knows. And that's why traditionally, at some of our weddings, we'll, see, we'll hear the Son ask the Father if it's the right time to do this. Is it time? Yes, it is time. We're standing underneath a chuppah. It's a canopy, a wedding canopy. It goes back to ancient times and represents the glory of God, the Shekhinah, as we say in Fort Worth, the Shekinah, glory of God. And it is the glory of God that has touched these two. They know that there is someone above them to whom they must turn. And out of that glory, out of that presence of God in their life, the glory of God can go out and touch the world around them. And that's why these sides are open, because everyone that encounters them will have a touch from heaven and from the glory of God himself. And so the chuppah is a picture not only of the wedding of Jonathan and Rebecca that we're here to celebrate, but also of God's eternal love for Israel, for his Jewish people, for those that are grafted in. So these two represent the bridegroom of heaven and the bride of Messiah, and together, they are a picture of what God wants to do in all of our lives. On behalf of Jonathan and Rebecca and the Lamb and Wise families, I welcome you to this very special celebration. Thank you so much for coming. Your presence here makes this time even more special. And we all know that we're here in this beautiful church to see two very special people get married. But as we begin this ceremony, I wanna say a few words about marriage that are very important for us to understand about the institution of marriage in general, but specifically what is about to happen here this evening. First of all, I wanna say that marriage is sacred. God made marriage as a sacred institution. The word sacred means two things. The first thing it means is it's not common. This is not an everyday thing. The second thing that sacred means is God is here. When it's sacred, it means that God is in it. The first marriage occurred in the Garden of Eden and God officiated it. 
And God took Adam and Eve and he joined them together by his spirit. And he was in the middle of their marriage. The original marriage was not a marriage between one man and one woman. The original marriage was a marriage between one man, one woman and God. And God always intended that he would be in the center of the marriage and that is what makes it sacred. And Jonathan and Rebecca have come here tonight to enter into the sacred institution of marriage with God in the center of their marriage. The second thing I want you to know about marriage is it's supernatural. The most important thing happening in this ceremony is not something that you're seeing or hearing. The most important thing happening here right now is the Holy Spirit is at work to take these two and to make them one. Jesus in Matthew 19, speaking about marriage, says what God has joined together, let not men separate, let not man put asunder. Marriage is not a piece of paper, it's a supernatural act of the Spirit of God. And tonight, Jonathan and Rebecca walked in here as two, they'll walk out as one. It's a miracle. There's a miracle happening here this evening. The Holy Spirit is up here on this platform and they came in here from two families, they will walk out as one family. They came in as two minds, they'll walk out with one. They came in as two hearts, they'll walk out with one. God supernaturally took Adam and Eve and put them together and he yoked them spirit to spirit as a married couple. The third thing about marriage is it's the safest relationship on earth. God created marriage in the Garden of Eden and he told us how it works. In Genesis 2, 24, as soon as he had finished creating Adam and Eve, he said, for this cause, a man will leave his father and mother, will cleave into his wife, and they too shall become one flesh. It seems like a short little verse, but in there are the three laws of marriage. They are for all generations. And the reason we know that is because Adam and Eve didn't have a mother. God says, for this cause, a man will leave his father and mother. Adam and Eve were both directly created by God. And so God was speaking the universal laws of marriage. And here they are very simply. Marriage is first. For this cause, a man will leave his father and mother. Tonight, Jonathan and Rebecca are leaving their parents, not forsaking them, not, a, not in any way doing anything wrong, but they're reprioritizing their lives. The word leave means reprioritize. Marriage only works. You don't have to apologize for back here. I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I'm not getting you in trouble. Marriage only works in first place. It has to be before your children. It has to be before your church. It has to be before your friends. It has to be before your work. It has to be before your cell phone, your computer, and social media. It only works in first place. The second thing that God said about marriage is, for this cause a man will cleave unto his wife. The word cleave means work. It means to pursue with all your energy. From the very beginning, God told us, marriage works when you work at it. This is not a relationship of convenience or ease. This is a servant relationship and the greatest marriage is two servants in love. And these are two servants up here right now. And they're gonna work at their marriage. The third thing that God told us is they too should become one. Marriage is about equals and it's about sharing. Marriage doesn't work when anyone dominates or when anyone controls. But in Adam and Eve, when God created them in the garden of Eden, he created them as equals to serve his will together. God said marriage is first. God said marriage is work, and God said marriage is among equals. And those are the three universal laws of marriage that make the safest relationship in the history of the world. So we are here tonight to celebrate not only their marriage, but the wonderful, beautiful institution of marriage that God calls in Malachi 2, the holy institution that he loves. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for Jonathan and Rebecca for this precious couple, something supernatural is about to happen. You're about to take their spirits and join them together in this beautiful bond. And Holy Spirit, we invite you right now into this place. I invite you, Lord, into every marriage, every couple that is listening to this right now, and they're just reminded of how sacred and special their relationship is. I pray that you would heal marriages, that you would bless marriages. And we pray that you would revive the institution of marriage in society, that people would respect what God has done and no longer put it asunder. But Lord, thank you so much for this precious couple right here. And we pray your blessing on this ceremony in Jesus' name, amen. I wanna first of all say how proud I am of you guys. 
and I know that I speak on behalf of your parents and your families. Uh, I think the first time I saw you guys together as a married couple was in Israel. I'm not, as a couple, not a married couple. As a couple, uh, yeah. The first time I saw you guys together as a couple was in Israel, and I, I knew you were a couple. You just, you know, I could just tell that God's hand was on you. But, but I wanna say this, you've honored God, you've honored your families, and you've honored each other. And because you've done that, God will honor you for the rest of your lives. You're a great example to couples who are getting married. And so this is a, a wonderful moment. I know it's the end of a long road for you and a, a lot of waiting, but it's worth it. And so now we're gonna take our vows. And Jonathan, I'm gonna begin with you. Jonathan, will you have Rebecca to be your wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health and forsaking all others? Will you keep yourself unto her alone so long as you both shall live? Say, I will. I will. Okay. Rebecca, will you have Jonathan to be your wedded husband? to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, will you keep yourself unto him alone so long as you both shall live? I will. Would you hold hands, please? And Jonathan, would you repeat after me? I, Jonathan, take thee, Rebecca. I, Jonathan, take thee, Rebecca. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And thereto. And thereto. I pledge to you my love. I pledge to you my love. Rebecca, would you repeat after me, please? I, Rebecca, take thee, Jonathan. I, Rebecca, take thee, Jonathan. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy ordinance. According to God's holy ordinance. And there too. And there too. I pledge to you my love. I pledge to you my love. Jonathan and Rebecca have written vows to each other that they're going to read their personal vows. Rebecca, you are my beloved, the desire of my heart. When I look at you, I'm overwhelmed by your grace, beauty, and passion, and your fierce love of God. Every moment with you is better than the last, and you challenge and inspire me every day. You light up the room when you enter, and I'm so deeply in love with you. I will fight with all my strength to be the husband, leader, and servant you need me to be. I will hold you, laugh with you, cry with you, and stand by you no matter what comes our way. And I commit my heart to you to love you, to stand by you, to cherish you from this day forth till my last breath. Okay. Jonathan. Growing up, I always wondered, oh no, I'm gonna cry. Does anyone have a tissue? Okay, <laughs> I wanna be prepared. Okay, I got this, okay. Jonathan, growing up, I always wondered what my future husband would be like, but through all my imagining, I could have never dreamed up someone as extraordinary as you. And then December 9th, 2016 <laughs> happened. You entered my world and my life has never been better. There's so many things I love about you. <laughs> your strength, your determination, your humor, and how caring you are. But my favorite thing about you is your heart, your tenderness to God, and your desire to please him above all else. Just like David, you're a man after God's own heart, which is why on this day, I am so confident to give you mine. I'm so thankful you pursued me. I'm so thankful you chose me, that you loved me at my best and at my worst. And today, I choose you. I'm so thankful for you. You're an example of God's grace and love in my life. God's grace because I got what I didn't deserve and God's love because he gave me you. You are the greatest gift God has ever given me and I promise to honor, love, and cherish you with my whole heart for my whole life. I love you, Jonathan Weiss. I love you. That's wonderful. 
The wedding day is important for a number of reasons. It signifies the joining of families, and of course, it commemorates the commitment that two people make to each other before God. But sometimes the date of the wedding can also have a special meaning. When Jonathan and Rebecca chose today for their wedding, they had no idea just how important this date was. And due this, to the significance of this date on the Jewish calendar, our dear friend, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, could not be here with us because he is celebrating this day with his congregation in New Jersey. He did, however, send a greeting and a blessing for this young couple, and he shares more about just how important and special this day is. So watch this. Jonathan and Rebecca, though I couldn't be with you physically, it's a blessing, it's an honor, it's a joy to be with you in this way for your wedding. You both come from a godly house and a heritage. Both of your parents I count as friends. When I spoke at the wedding of Joshua and Rachel, I shared that God arranged it so that the wedding would take place on an appointed time of celebration, the Feast of Tabernacles. Well, God has ordained that your wedding would take place on another appointed time of celebration. This weekend is the Feast of Shavuot. Now that only leaves one other appointed celebration, the Feast of Passover, but considering the family is named Lamb, I think you have that one covered. Now the Feast of Shavuot celebrates the covenant and how perfect that today is the day of your covenant. That means that it is to be stronger. Your covenant is to be stronger than feeling, than emotion, than circumstance, than life. It's to overcome till death do you part. And the Feast of Shavuot is the Feast of Israel that happens to celebrate marriage, the marriage of God and His people. To tell you that your marriage is to be the manifestation, the outflowing, the emanation of each of your marriages with God. That Jonathan, from now on, you're to see Rebecca as God sees you and love her as God loves you, as His precious bride. And Rebecca, from now on, as you look at Jonathan, you're to see him as you see the Lord, as your beloved bridegroom. But there's more. The Feast of Shavuot in Greek is Pentecost. That is telling you that your covenant of marriage has to be empowered by the Spirit. It's not the requirement of love that's going to make your marriage. It's the Spirit of love, the Spirit of God. And there's more to the mystery. The Feast of Shavuot is the celebration of the harvest. So your marriage is not only to be that you love each other, but that you love with each other, you love others, your marriage is your ministry, and you're called to minister in the harvest and the great commission of Messiah. And one last thing, one last mystery. Do you know what is appointed to be read on the Feast of Shavuot? The Book of Ruth. So all around the world this weekend, the Book of Ruth is being read. And what is the Book of Ruth? It's the story of the joining together the marriage of Jew and Gentile a Jewish bridegroom and a Gentile bride who then becomes a Jewish bride. How awesome. And all around the world this weekend, these words are being spoken. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you dwell, I will dwell. Your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God and nothing but death shall separate you from me. Rebecca, you and your house are already grafted into the nation of Israel, but now you and your house are to be joined in blood and destiny to Israel's house. As you all have loved Israel, you are now one with it. So welcome to the house of Israel. And in that, I'm gonna give you both the blessing that God appointed for Israel to be given through the sons of Aaron, of which I'm a part, the blessing of God himself on your marriage now and always. Please bow your heads. Verechecha Adonai La Yishmerecha Yaher Adonai Panabalecha Vichunecha Yisa Adonai Panavalecha Viyasem Lucham Shalom The Lord bless you Jonathan and Rebecca, the Lord keep you all the days of his life. The Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob 
cause his face to shine upon you, upon your marriage, upon your home. And the Lord give you grace from heaven every day of your life. The Lord God of heaven and earth, lift up the glory of his countenance upon your life and your life together as one. And the Lord give to you his shalom every day of your life. All the blessings of his love, his peace, his joy, his prosperity, and all his grace. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus the Messiah, Or HaOlam, the light of the world, Uchvod Yisrael, the glory of Israel, the Hatan, and the bridegroom of our souls. God bless you, Jonathan and Rebecca, now and always. Shalom. In the Gospels, the very first communion was both intimate and powerful. It marked the moment when everything began to change. It foreshadowed what Christ would accomplish on the cross, displaying the love of God for all mankind. Today, the taking of the bread and the juice represents and reminds us that only through Jesus that we rest in God's goodness, His grace and mercy, His divine favor, and His provision for our lives. And it reveals the Father's heart concerning our relationship with Him and our well-being while here on this earth. Jonathan and Rebecca have chosen to take communion as one of their very first acts together as a married couple. But to preserve the reverence and intimacy of this moment, they are going to observe communion privately under the hoopah. Now, let me tell you about the hoopah. In the Old Testament, for 400 years, the presence of God dwelled in the tabernacle. And the tabernacle was simply a movable tent. So the hoopah represents the tabernacle and therefore represents the presence of God. And I know that it's in the heart of Jonathan and Rebecca for the presence of God to dwell in their lives and for the anointing to rest upon them. And with keeping with Jewish tradition, Jonathan and Rebecca are going to sign the ketupah which is the sacred marriage agreement in Jewish tradition. It is a charter of the woman's rights in the marriage and the man's duties. And in a moment, Joni and I and Jonathan's parents, Miles and Catherine Weiss are gonna place a tallit over Jonathan and Rebecca. What is a tallit? It is a Jewish prayer shawl. It represents the covering of God upon their lives. And it represents the generational blessings that have been passed down upon them from their parents, their grandparents, and their ancestors. Now, as we proceed, I wanna ask you to pray a prayer, a blessing upon the marriage of Jonathan and Rebecca. The wedding is great, but it's the marriage that is obviously so much more important. And in a moment, we're gonna have a medley of songs sung by Rebecca Hart and Michael Bethany. But I thought you would like to know that the arrangement of these songs was prepared by Micah Mahoney, who is one of the groomsmen, and he and his wife, Abby, 
recorded this song in Israel. And now to sing about come dance with me and the glory of the Lord come down. Rebecca Hart and Michael Bethany.
Would you take Rebecca's ring, put it on her finger, please? Repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. In the Son. And the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. Rebecca, would you take Jonathan's ring, please? Yes. Put it on his finger. And repeat after me. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for Jonathan and Rebecca. And they have come and they've honored you and their families and each other. And they have, in the presence of God and these witnesses, they've said their vows. And they have the blessing of heaven and of their families. And now, Lord, we pray is supernaturally that you would take their two spirits and make them into one. Just like you said in your word, Lord, to become one, one home, one heart, one life, one purpose. And we bless them. We bless this new couple with health, with wealth, with fertility, with favor, with promotion, with protection, with every blessing under heaven. We bless them and we pray happiness all the days of their lives in Jesus' name, amen. There's a precious Hebrew tradition when a couple is joined together for the groom to smash a glass in celebration of their union by recognizing the fragility of relationships and the, the commitment that they are making to guard over one another, to watch over one another. And also, this is a very special cup because it is a cup of communion that they have shared. Jonathan and Rebecca have shared from this cup of communion. And so what they are saying, when Jonathan smashes this glass, I want you all to yell Mazel Tov, which means prosperity and strength and good, good days and blessing upon this couple. This is so special because it also is the cup that they drank from together. And by smashing this glass, they are saying that no one else will ever drink from the cup of their love, their intimate love, but only one another. So it's a symbol and a sign and a prophetic act about fidelity and love everlasting. It is my great pleasure to introduce for the very first time ever, Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Weiss. <laughs> 